Hello everyone. Welcome to my class. Today in this lecture we are going to discuss about the network layer performance. The earlier class we have discussed about what is a network layer services and then how the packet switching has been used in that network layer. And in this class we are going to see how to measure the network layer performance in terms of delay, in terms of throughput. There are a lot of factors which is going to involve in the performance of an network layer but we will be seeing in this class what are all the major factors the first the network layer performance can be measured in the following four important factors the first one is the delay the delay between from the source to the destination how much delay which is going to be experienced and what are all the different possible delays are going to happen and what is the cost for those delays also that is the first factor and the second factor is the throughput the throughput here the how much bits are how much datas are going to be uh, transmitted on any one particular point for a second in the network and what is in throughput and also we are going to see that what is the relationship between uh, throughput versus delay in reality in, in in real scenario in the network and what is an impact and how it is going to affect the performance of a network and the third important factor is a very uh, very crucial one that was a packet loss the packet loss which may affect the network performance in a very greater way so if any other packet is lost then automatically the sending station has to retransmit the same packets which is going to affect the entire network performance as well as which is going to waste the network resources so the packet loss is an important factor for calculating the network layer performance and the fourth and final important point is the congestion control if the network if if the network ex experiences some of the congestion which is going to occur in the network because the network may be uh, endless there is a there is there is no limit there is no boundary for a network in internet so it is going to cover a very wider in area so in that cases sometimes we can't able to predict what the congestion where the congestion is going to occur so in this also the congestion control algorithms which is going to be used in both in the transport layer as well as the network layer with that limitation what the network layer can able to do to avoid some congestion control mechanism that we are going to discuss it in this video apart from that the transport layer congestion control also we will be discussing in the later videos so the congestion control is an issue important issue that will also if you effectively write a congestion control algorithm then easily we can improve the network performance because if that particular network or any of the point if it experience any congestion immediately the routing protocol has to take a alternative route so that the packet loss can be avoided if the packet loss is avoided the packet retransmission can be avoided if the packet retransmission is avoided the network resources can be utilized for another one real time data transfer can be utilized so that we can effectively use the network resources in the via the network layer now we will see one by one now first we will see the what is a delay we all expect everyone will expect that we want an immediate response if i'm going to browse anything something from the internet if i click i want to get it so automatically the customer will be happy the same way everyone will ex everyone will want an immediate response without any delay they want to do that but in practical it is not possible it means that it may experience a very small delay but the network always trying to reduce as much as less delay in the data transmission that is what we are going to discuss it here so in practical source to destination there will be some delays that delays are there are four types of delays normally which is going to experience the first one is a transmission delay so the overall how the transmission to transmit the data from one end to the another end what is the overall transmission delay and the second is a propagation delay in this propagation delay we may know that the network when it's the package when it's traveling from one node to the another one network to the another network it may pass through many links 
so each link may be a different in nature some links may have a different characteristics some link may have a, a guided media some link may be unguided media even in a guided media also there are different types is there each one have its own characteristics own data rate own uh, uh, own error rate so so the propagation delay it is going to be a very important concepts and to calculate the propagation delay is also highly challenging task and then a processing delay the processing delay which is going to experience that whenever the packet moves to any other networking devices that network do some process it is going to do some process it means that it is going to read the data and it is going to forward the data to the next next node or next network in that case it has to do some process when the packet arrives by the time some other packets may be that network may be experiencing processing the uh, other uh, packets in that case this packet has to wait for some time so that processing delay is also an important factor and then queuing delay if any other packet is already processed this new packet has to wait in the queue till it gets its own turn so by default the router is going to have its own algorithm and which packet has to be given a priority some priority mechanism also will be there so based on that which is going to process it so there will be some queuing delay as if totally there are four types of delays one is a transmission delay propagation delay processing delay and queuing delay now let us see the throughput throughput is defined so how we can able to define it is how many number of bits are passing through in a, any one single point for a second in a network so if you take any one network for any one part any one link that particular link per second how many bits are going to be transmitted that is going to be an throughput so the transmission rate of a data at that point simply we can call it as a what is the transmission rate of a data what is the transmission rate of a data at that particular point so when a packet move when the packet moves from one network to the another network it means that source network to the destination network so the packet may pass through several links so that links may be a different in characteristics so that itself it is going to make a big challenge for us so each with a different transmission rate sometimes a guided sometimes unguided so sometimes a guided with a lower category sometimes a guided with a higher category so each one have its different transmission rates so to determine the throughput of a whole path from the source to the destination it is going to be a very difficult task now let us explain with one simple concept now we are going to calculate the throughput in a path with the three different links in a series now we are going to consider it it consists of a totally three links so there is one source and the destination in between there are two routers so totally it consists of a three links say for example now tr is a transmission rate now from from the source to the r1 from the source to r1 link 1 which have the capacity of 200 kbps which have the capacity of 200 kbps so your source station will think that it can able to handle 200 kbps per second so according to that it may it may forward the packets to the next router that router r1 to the next r2 that transmission media which can able to accept the bandwidth of 100 kbps per second so you see it is receiving 200 kbps per second but it can able to forward to the next router is going to be 100 kbps per second but from r2 to the destination if you see that it can able to handle 150 kbps per second so the major bottleneck major the bottleneck you can experience it in the link 2 it means that from r1 to r2 so r1 may experience r1 may experience a lot of huge packets which may be in the queue so this is what we call it as a bottleneck next is a a path through the internet backbone so whenever we must have an internet internet is a backbone at the back end we must have a higher capacity so that it can able to handle the huge amount of traffic say uh, from source to the router this is a transmission uh, link transmission medium is a tr1 and another one router to the uh, 
destination is going to be another transmission rate so but in between the backbone from one router to the another router it must have a high transmission rate so that the router can able to handle a huge traffic in that now we can see that effect of throughput in a shared link if it is going to be a shared link means see for a router is r1 which has connected to three sources each source may be generating each source may be generating a 200 kbps per second then r1 at a, at a time per second it can able to receive a 600 kbps per second so that is a maximum capacity r1 can able to forward the informations to the packets to the next router so that is a maximum capacity if it goes beyond that if anyone sources handling sending more than 200 kbps then automatically the packets are going to be in a queue in the r1 router so that is an effect of throughput especially when we were using in a shared links normally in internet one router to the another routers are going to be a shared link only next is in a packet loss which is going to severely affect the performance of a network for example if you are sending 100 packets 50 packets are going to be lost then again the next next time next to uh, time slots is going to be only used for only retransmission of the packets so 50 percentage only utilization can be given can be utilized and that too for sending an acknowledgement that is also going to occupy the channel that is where packet loss is going to affect the performance in a very severe manner so the packet lost during the transmission because of so many reasons we cannot define that only these these are all only these two reasons only the packets are going to last there may be a traffic may occur there may be a huge congestion may occur then sometimes the routers may be failed in between there are so many reasons there may be a processing time maybe 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 higher so a router receives a packet whenever the router receives a packet while processing in another packet so the received packets need to be stored in the input buffer if one packet is going to re reach our router R1, already R1 is processing some packet means then this packet has to wait in the queue as like how we are uh, maintaining in the queue in if you are going to hospital or any uh, flight reservation where there may be a lot of queues are going to happen whenever you get your turn that time only you can your process your request will be processed it's the same way so the received packet needs to be stored in the input buffer so that buffer is also cannot keep it as a infinity so it is also have a limited in size suppose unexpected traffic which is going to created by the network then the buffer once it gets filled once a buffer is filled then the next packet whoever whichever the packet which arrives to that particular router that packet must be dropped that packet is supposed to be dropped which leads to an a packet loss if identify that the previous station sender will thinks that the packet has been successfully sent then it has to identify which packet has been uh, lost and that packet has to be identified sending an acknowledgement and then retransmission process so this packet loss this has to be retransmitted in turn which is going to create an overflow which causes a more packet loss in the network for that we require some congestion control algorithm which is going to improve how much effectively you are writing a congestion control algorithm implementing into that so based on that you can improve the performance of a network say for example congestion control cc mechanism will improve the performance uh, which has to be discussed in fully detail in the transport layer but congestion at the network layer is uh, which is related to the throughput and the delay now you see the first diagram here the, what is the capacity we are giving how much we are going to load the capacity and what is the delay for it if there is a no congestion if there is a no congestion to, to, to at the start of the origin when the capacity is going to be very less definitely there will be a delay is going to be very low but when you keep on increasing the capacity at some stages when the processing delay and other factors because of that slowly delay get increased when the delay get increased at some stage it is going to congestion may occur it cannot able to handle in that situation which is going to create a lot of congestion in the network same way the throughput versus capacity 
if there is a no congestion area if the capacity is going to be very less then automatically the transmission rate is going to be very less then it can easily handle that packets there won't be any congestion at some stages when the capacity increases then automatically the throughput also which will, which will decreases automatically congestion area throughput will decrease and the congestion may leads to decrease the network performance and there are two mechanisms we can use it to avoid the congestion we can we can avoid the congestion in the network that two techniques are back proper back pressure method and choke packet method first we will see the back pressure method you just assume that this is one source and that is a destination in between there are four routers are there you just assume that the data which is going to flow from source to destination now you identify now we assume that the congestion the router 3 is going to get some congestion so immediately what it is going to do is which is going to send a back pressure which is going to send a back pressure it is sending an information to all the sources saying that already i was congested so what it is going to happen is the routing algorithms which is going to divert the traffic into some other route so that the congestion area the third router may resolve from the issues it will overcome from the congestion it will take some time by the time the, all the packets may travel in a different path as like how the traffic which is going to happen in our roads if there is a traffic in, in in any one particular area then the vehicles will travel in a, some other some other way to reach the destination maybe slightly the time it is going to higher or the distance may be higher that is where that message has to reach to the sources so that it can divert the traffic into the other area that is one method to avoid the congestion and the next one is a choke packet method in this whichever the router is congested immediately which is going to send a small packet very small in size of packet to all the sources so that it is saying that i am congested in this route is congested so that the source station can able to divert the traffic into some other route so that it can avoid the traffic in the network so this is how we can improve the network performance so let me recap that what we have covered is so the network performance the network performance can be calculated with a four important factors that are all the factors are delay throughput packet loss and congestion control in this first we have discussed about uh, delay so delay is an unavoidable one so delay which may experience from source to destination there may be a four types of delays may experience there is a transmission delay queuing delay processing delay and propagation delays and then that also we have discussed and then what is in throughput so at any point in the network for a particular second how many bits are going to be transmitted that is in a throughput and this throughput which is going to involve with the multiple uh, links how the links are going to be and what is the capacity of that particular link and in internet what type of links has to be there and what is the capacity should be there so that we can we can we can increase the throughput that we have discussed and the third important factor is packet loss the packet loss which is going to severely affect the network performance so always the our protocol network layer protocol it is trying to avoid the packet loss and to retransmission process so that the network uh, resources can be utilized in an effective way that is where the packet loss uh, concepts we have discussed at loss finally the congestion control mechanism congestion control mechanism can be utilized in both transport layer as well as a network layer at some privileges at some level we can able to perform in that network uh, layer itself so in this network layer uh, trying to avoid the traffic congestion in the uh, routers so that also we have perf performed in the two ways one is a choke packet method and another one is a back pressure method hope you understood the concept of uh, network layer performance in clear way if you have any doubts you please drop it into the comment line i'm happy to respond to your questions uh, thanks for watching my class if you don't subscribe to my channel please subscribe to my channel so that you can watch all my videos thank you bye